Football is littered with traditions that center around building a sense of team and purpose as a way of keeping the players motivated on the gridiron. It is particularly important within football because of the week-to-week -week pounding that the players take, so it is understandable why so many of these gimmicks have come to be. But while some motivational tactics do end up being gimmicks, like funerals for footballs after a bad game or the infamous turnover chain, which seemed to have a million different iterations of it last season, there are some tactics that have transcended gimmick and lived on past the coaches that introduced them and the players that originally used them. These gimmicks have become rituals that are truly ingrained in the culture of the programs that leverage them. One of these rituals is the use of helmet sticks, reward decals, or pride stickers, whatever you want to call them. The little icons stuck to the back of so many schools' helmets. And while it is easy to accept these helmet stickers as part of football today, it's pretty interesting to take a look back at how a tradition that runs so deep started. There are actually some conflicting reports as to how exactly it is that they started, more so who was the mastermind behind this grand tradition. I think a lot of who was credited with the idea is based off of an assortment of mysterious 70 plus year old pictures, school allegiances, and regional rumors, which I guess is to be expected considering that it is such an old claim to stake. The helmet sticker origin stories come from all over, the most famous one being that it came from Columbus at THE Ohio State University under legendary head coach Woody Hayes. The story supposedly dates back to 1968, and according to Ohio State legend, the Buckeyes were in the midst of a championship run when a longtime trainer, Ernie Biggs, had an epiphany. He and Coach Hayes thought to dole out helmet stickers resembling Buckeye leaves to the players as positive reinforcement and for motivational purposes. Coach Hayes was apparently enthralled with the idea, and it became a school tradition that lives on to this day, as the Buckeyes' helmets are still cluttered with these stickers. These kinds of outside-of-the-box strategies were right in line with Coach Hayes' coaching philosophies. He always recognized that there were little ways that the coaching staff could better show its appreciation for the players' efforts. Quote, Woody was always trying to get that extra motivational edge, end quote. Rex Kern, Ohio State's quarterback during the 1968 season, told ESPN. There have been a series of variations made to the Buckeyes' helmet sticker tradition, both in size and criteria. According to Kern, one of the most notable changes to the helmet sticker from the Hayes era is the value each sticker had. Because Hayes was famously frugal with the stickers and when a player actually earned one, it became a huge production. As for Jim Tressel, a later Ohio State coach, he valued a teamwork approach over an individual-based award system, meaning that big plays like touchdowns and interceptions no longer necessarily guaranteed a sticker. That doesn't mean players can't earn individual stickers, but it is generally more for process-based merit, like meeting film grade standards set for each position by the coaching staff. One piece of the tradition that has stayed constant throughout, though, every player on the team got a helmet sticker for each victory, and entire units were able to earn them for meeting statistical criteria, like a discretionary number of three and outs for the defense, or X amount of 12-plus yard plays for the offense. Just because the Ohio State has the most noise surrounding its stickers doesn't necessarily mean that Coach Hayes and Ernie Biggs are really the ones who started the tradition. There are a couple of other schools that have already laid claim to being the true originators of the helmet sticker. One school, located just 125 miles west of Columbus, has gained some notoriety as the actual originator of the helmet sticker. That would be Miami of Ohio, back in 1965, two years before Coach Hayes and Ohio State began using them. Many people believe that the helmet sticker ritual began there with Jim Young, who was an assistant coach at Miami. Not only would Miami of Ohio have been on Hayes' radar at Ohio State, it was actually his last head coaching stop before going to Columbus so it is likely he would have been keeping some sort of tabs on his former school. Beyond Young in Ohio, there is actually an even earlier claim, one that was attributed to Gene Stauber, who was the freshman coach at Nebraska between 1955 and 1957, according to former Nebraska head coach Pete Elliott. While there wasn't a ton of documentation of the freshman team at Nebraska in the mid-1950s, there is some validity to this claim. In Miami, the sticker would have been a brash-looking star or a tomahawk, depending on the era. Stauber was a head assistant at the University of Illinois for nearly 10 years. In a 1962 photo of linebacker Dick Butkus with a sticker on his helmet corroborates the usage of it here. Another disciple of Hayes who was trying to take credit for the inception of helmet stickers was none other than the famous Michigan coach Bo Schembechler. The tradition at Michigan became a big to-do and the players bought into the idea, big time. The stickers were treated like a holy commodity and the players weren't even allowed to put the stickers on themselves. Instead, the equipment manager would handle it. And while adding a decal at Michigan wasn't a big ceremony like some of the other schools, it is clear that the desired effect was being achieved. As with all these origin stories, this one has some twists and turns as well. 
Shem Bechler played football as a student at Miami of Ohio under Woody Hayes and eventually returned there as the head coach in 1963. Both their stories are even more intertwined the closer you look, as Shem Bechler served as an assistant under Hayes at Ohio State for five years. The discrepancy between the two's claims actually met during a 1969 news conference shortly after Shem Bechler took over the reins at the University of Michigan, much to the chagrin of Hayes, who was still coaching at rival Ohio State. Shem Bechler explained that Michigan players would now be placing yellow, football-shaped reward stickers on their helmets after each game. Oh, like Woody? A reporter asked. Uh-huh, Shem Bechler grinned triumphantly. Woody got the idea from me. He would continue to explain to the press that it was actually him, not Hayes, who had created the helmet sticker at Miami as an incentive program that could help to motivate the players. Now, if you really want to muddy the waters, there is another coach who has been given credit for the ritual. Former Rutgers defensive backs coach Dewey King was credited with being either the first or one of the first by giving out award decals back in 1961. King, who came from a military family, was inspired to design the large white star decal by Colonel Pappy Boyington, who was a heroic Marine in World War II. Colonel Boyington would have tiny plane decals painted on the fuselage of his pilot's planes to recognize a job well done for enemies shot down. King wrote about this in his book, quote, It was my thought that if painting a miniature enemy plane on fuselages for each enemy shot out of the skies in wartime was good, then a star pasted on the helmet of each past defender getting an interception in football during peacetime would also be good. It has been. We believe in psychological warfare. End quote. According to Michael Pulowski, who was either super biased or super knowledgeable, considering he wrote an entire book on Rutgers football titled Rutgers Football, A Gridiron Tradition in Scarlet, explains that King only allowed team manager Tony Olivia to give out stickers for interceptions, but that it became a huge part of the fanfare at the games and if a player hauled in an interception, the crowd would become ruckus, chanting, Give him the star! His book includes photos of the team marching out from the locker room featuring some players with stars on their helmets that is reportedly from 1961. Former Rutgers star Pierce Frauenheim talked about how impactful the ritual was at length with Ryan Dunleavy. I was anxious to get to the sideline, Pierce recalled of one instance when he iced a victory against Columbia, so Tony could put a sticker on my helmet, all the better. Another member of the juggernaut Scarlet Knights in the early 1960s who raved about the significance of the ritual was Sam Moody, who returned two of his seven league-leading interceptions for touchdowns in 1961. Quote, When you saw that ball coming, you wanted to run with reckless abandon after you made the interception. There was no such thing as batting down a pass. We would grab it. End quote. The Scarlet Knights consistently led the country in interceptions during an era of football that was undeniably rush-heavy. The players genuinely believe that having the stars on their helmets struck fear into opposing quarterbacks who had to think twice before they threw the ball near a Rutgers defensive back with multiple stars on his helmet. Did opposing passers really do a double take in the middle of the play if a stray star caught their eye? Probably not, but that's how powerful of a psychological tool the stickers became for the cohort in New Jersey, validating King's belief in the effect that the ceremony would have on his team. So who is the rightful heir to the helmet stick throne? It seems like it will always depend on who you ask and what their allegiance is. In the time since Coach Hayes or Coach King or Coach Stauber rolled out the helmet sticker, there has been decades of college football history littered with legendary coaches and players who have weighed in on the helmet sticker. Some of these college football icons implemented their own usage of the decals, and others, well, let's just say that they did not think very highly of the ritual. The Nittany Lions of Penn State are a perfect example of a program that feels like they are above gimmicky motivational tactics like the helmet decals. This was especially true during former longtime head coach Joe Paterno's reign atop Happy Valley. At that time, no one would dare to tack a sticker of any kind onto the clean white headgear, with the exception of the lone blue strip down the middle, of course. The coaching staff preached a team-oriented focus repeatedly and felt like any sort of individual praise was contradictory to their core philosophies. I've never been for that stuff, Paterno said. That's why we've never had names on uniforms because nobody achieves anything without the others. Not only have there been holdouts, but a number of programs, including well-known programs like California, Tennessee, UCLA, and Air Force, have actually discontinued the usage of helmet stickers. Either way, a pretty epic tradition has been started, and it is insane to think about how widespread of a practice it has become, regardless of the power programs that have chosen to abstain. In Division I alone, over 20 different schools are using them and countless FCS, Division III, and high school programs have their own iterations of the decal. Mississippi State has a bulldog. Michigan now has a football with a wolverine on it. West Virginia has a musket. 
The variation to achieve different school strategies are endless. Florida State's tomahawks are only given out for academic achievements. Notre Dame issues shamrocks, but only for the practice helmets. Northwestern has a Wildcat sticker, but they are only given out for team wins. It seems crazy that such a little piece of college football history has had so many different permutations of it show up on our screens on Saturdays. But that's because football, particularly college football, is crazy. It is filled with traditions and rituals that differentiate it from the pro game, and it's what makes being a college football fan all the more special. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, go click that subscribe button down below. If you like the video, then like the video, we'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, don't forget to tune into TBS for more cool videos every single day.